Hello friends, I welcome you all to my channel. So in the conceptual NCRT review series, we are taking the topic of human health and diseases and out of that I will be taking here in this particular video the topic of allergy. And you know that it is just a small one or two paragraphs in the textbook but yes the questions asked from that is slightly more conceptual than it is uh, you know understood by a normal person, I mean uh, a person of uh, your age. So yes, allergy, uh, we need to understand that it is associated with the immune system of the body. Immune system normally has a normal response, but let us say that there are certain antigens in the environment. These antigens come and attack us. I mean, not attacking, we are exposed to the antigens. Now in that kind of a situation, there should be a normal response of the body. But let's say that this is highly exaggerated. This time, the immune system is going to attack against it. It is going to respond against it, but yes, this time the response produced by the immune system is highly exaggerated that this itself is going to cause a problem for the person who is experiencing this particular exaggerated immune response. So allergy is an exaggerated immune response to antigens in the environment, yes. So allergy is the exaggerated immune response to antigens in the environment. So that is why this word that is exaggerated is having so much of importance in the definition. So in the definition part, this word has to be given so much of importance over there. Now, antigens, where are these antigens present? In the environment. So here, you know that dust is one of the most common antigen that against which you can have allergy. So house dust is one of the most common thing that people have a lot of sneezing, they have watery eyes, running nose whenever they are exposed to house dust. Pollen grains. Pollen grains especially if you talk about developed countries like America, there people have very less dust in their home. But more than that when they take a walk in the garden, whenever they are exposed to pollen grains, most of the many of such people, they develop exaggerated immune response that is allergy to against pollen grains. And even animal fur, let's say that you have a pet animal at home and uh, it is shedding a lot of uh, you know fur on its body. So that again can cause a lot of immune response that is allergy to it. So allergy is actually an exaggerated immune response. It is not an, a normal immune response that a person becomes unaware of but yes this the person becomes aware because he will have a lot of distressing symptoms once he is exposed to, this, to these kind of allergens. Now, it is mediated by the antibody, which is the antibody, which is a direct question which is asked every time, that is IgE. If you have the habit of writing practice tests or you are learning in an institute, they will be asking this question many a times in the examination as a direct question or in uh, select the correct statement. Any, any kind of examination, you will be having this kind of an option, that is, they will be again and again testing you uh, on your knowledge of the antibody involved in the allergic response. The cell involved in allergic response is mast cell. Mast cell is the cell which is involved in, uh, you know, contributing to the development of allergy over here. And this mast cell, as we all know, it will secrete histamine and serotonin. Out of both these things, both are involved, but yes, let's talk about histamine as such over here. Histamine is one of the most important mediator of allergy. So this is going to cause bronchoconstriction. It will constrict your bronchi, bronchi and trachea so that you will be having a lot of problem in uh, breathing. So that is why you will have respiratory difficulty. Difficulty in breathing is one of the very characteristic classical symptom which is seen in case of allergy. So symptoms are obviously you know everything about that. So that is uh, watery eyes. Eyes will start pouring a lot of water. That means tears. Running nose, sneezing, your face will turn red and yes, oh, everything is because of histamine. And finally, you will be having difficulty in breathing. Why? Because your bronchi and trachea are being constricted by the action of histamine. Now, this is how it goes. And if you talk about the extreme case of uh, allergy, what happens is that the patient will collapse on there and he will no longer be able to breathe at all. And this is actually taught in all classes. That is anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is very, very serious. It is a medical emergency. Anaphylaxis, the person will not at all be able to breathe and he can die on all of a sudden. So let's say that uh, penicillin is one of a drug that, uh, you know, first antibiotic. This is the most important feature with respect to penicillin that it can cause anaphylactic reaction. 
So, you know, we need to test whether a person is allergic to a substance or not. Now, that is done by these kind of tests. See, so you see this patch test and injecting allergen. So, if you inject the allergen into the body, let's, let's say over the arm, we inject a very, very mild amount of that body, uh, that allergen. And what we do is that we will see the patient after some four days and we will check whether he is having any kind of symptoms over there. And if that it is present over there, then we can say that the person is allergic. This is how we test it. You can have a patch test also. We have a patch which can be stuck over here. And that contain over the back it is normally kept over there. So it contains a lot of allergens on it. And if you stick it, you wait for some four days and you will get the result after that. So this is how you will be testing for that. So with this, we come to the diagnosis of this. We have completed that. And to treat it, I said that uh, mediator is histamine. So if you give antihistamine drugs, definitely the person will have a lot of relief. So that is why you will be giving antihistamines. And yes, steroids. Steroids are again decrease, decreasing the immunity. De steroids will help us in decreasing the immunity of a person. Now that is why you take steroids in many autoimmune conditions and all. And since this is an exaggerated immune response, you will have to decrease the immunity in that kind of a situation. You can give steroids for that. Adrenaline is a very important drug which is utilized for the purpose of treating allergy at severe, severe cases. Let's say anaphylaxis is experienced by a person. There you will be giving adrenaline as the drug. So this is the first question that is asked that I am taking from the topic of uh, you know allergy. And yes, it is associated with the disease called as asthma. Let's understand this question. So this is a question that was asked in 2019 NEET exam. So in 2019, they came up with a question that due to the increasing airborne allergen and pollutants, many people in urban areas are suffering from respiratory disorder causing wheezing. So you see, this is the point over here. So they have some respiratory disease which causes wheezing over here. Now, due to uh, which uh, they have given four options, now we need to understand why this respiratory disease causes this kind of wheezing. Now, from the picture that is present over here, we, you see there are allergens over here. So, it has to be an allergic response. Now, what is the allergic response that we are learning in the topic of breathing and exchange of gases? The only allergic response that we are learning over there is asthma. So, the topic or the question is actually demanding a knowledge of a disease called as asthma. It is an allergic response. So what happens is that here again, as I said in the topic of allergy, so here it uh, mediator is IgE, immunoglobulin E is the mediator. Along with that, mast cells also play a major role in uh, providing or uh, the providing the exaggerated immune response that makes a person difficult find it finding it difficult to breathe. So if you see all these four options, benign growth in the mucus lining of nasal cavity. From here, if a growth is happening, yes, there can be a lot of problems in the nose, but that is not asthma. Asthma is something that is deeper inside. So option one is wrong. Inflammation of bronchi and bronchioles. Yes, this is the answer for this particular question. Now, it is very directly given in the textbook at the type at the area where they have discussed all the you know diseases pertaining to. Uh, respiratory system. So it is a direct straightforward derivative from the NCERT. They have directly taken up the sentence and they have presented over here as the question. So inflammation of bronchi and bronchioles. Now how does it this happen? Yes, it is because of an IgE mediated immune response. Proliferation of fibrous tissue and damaging alveolar walls of the lungs. No, there is no proliferation of any tissue and there is no much damage over there and reduction secretion of surfactant by pneumocyte. No, this is not the case over here. This is the case in certain other disease, which I don't think will be necessary at this particular level. So the correct answer for this question is option number two. So we have one more question pertaining to a very similar situation like this. We'll go, to, go into that. So here we are with the second question. So this is a question I have taken from the 2000. 16 NEET exam. There were two exams conducted over there. So uh, this question is from the first exam that was conducted there. That paper I call it as a piece of art because you know it uh, tells us a lot of things pertaining to you know time management in the exam. So I will request you to once you finish learning the entire syllabus of this particular exam do have it a try. You keep a time of uh, you know three hours and then you start solving it. Let's see how much time you take to completely solve this paper. That will you know teach you a lot of things. That paper itself was very challenging for me when I came to attend it. That was my first paper when I wrote. Neat. So let's say uh, asthma has been covered in the previous question. Now in this question they are asking something else of this. Asthma is attributed to you have four options have been given. So bacterial infection of lungs. See what is this bacterial infection? Let's say that uh, you are having a streptococcus pneumonia infection of the lung or hemophilus influ influenza in, uh, infection of the lung. These two organisms have been taught to us as to cause 
pneumonia in the lungs. So this is going to cause pneumonia, not asthma. Right. Now, the third option is inflammation of trachea. Now, is this a part of asthma? Maybe it is a part of asthma, yes. You know that airway or the conducting a part of the respiratory system, that also is involved in asthma as far as this kind of disease is concerned. But let's look for certain more basic option over here. That is allergic response by mast cells in the lungs. Does that sound much more better than the third option? Yes, that sounds much more better. Why? Because we discussed the concept of allergy over here. We said that the cells contributing are mast cells. The antibody is IgE. So everything of these kind of things will play a major role over there. It will secrete histamine and that can cause a lot of problems in the airway. Yes. So inflammation of trachea, maybe this is also a correct option, but I will be choosing this particular option because they have asked asthma is attributed to or what is the basic, uh, you know, mechanism of asthma. Why is this happening? So asthma is happening because of allergic response by mast cells. Due to that particular feature, you will be having another feature that is, yeah, trachea and bronchi and bronchiole are inflamed. That is a result of what is going to happen over here. In the previous question, they said wheezing is going to be there. Why is there wheezing? Yes, it is because of bronchial and bronchial inflammation. Because you know the airway when it, when it gets inflamed, it gets constricted and that can cause all the wheezing problem. But here, this is asking a much more, uh, you know, basic detail of asthma. So I'll be marking option two as the correct option here. Now fourth option, accumulation of fluid in the lungs. When you have a lot of fluid in the lungs, will you be able to breathe easily? No, this is not possible here. Now this disease is not at all on your level, but since it has been, it is there as an option in the need question, I will be telling the name of this disease. This is called as pulmonary edema. This is called as accumulation of fluid in the lungs. So let's say a patient is having heart disease, then he can have this. Or the patient is having certain other problems also, uh, he can have this kind of disease. Like I said, acquired respiratory distress syndrome. That is not at all on your level, but yes, this can cause pulmonary edema in the lungs. So yes, these three options are uh, very much at your level. These can be very easily understood and can be analyzed in this paper. So that is all I would like to discuss over here in asthma. I have clubbed it with the concept of, uh, you know, asthma and uh, allergy. So I hope this was very much fruitful for those who are preparing for NEET exam. So if you liked it, please like, share and comment in the comment box below. Thank you.